Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yimini, and each week we'll look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Rafuah Shalema, the complete and speedy recovery of Harav Mitai ben Shoshana, Lehem Ben Shabbas Gittel, and Shaul Ben Brit. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Yerachmiah Daniel Ben Gedalia. May their souls be uplifted and may the memories be a blessing. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Chukas, a united people. Our Parsha begins with Moshe teaching the intricate laws of the Para Aduma, the red heifer. The Para Aduma is a red cow that was never used and is slaughtered as an offering. Then it is burnt and its ashes used to rectify the most severe of ritual impurities to masmes, the purity contracted through interacting with the human corpse. When a person touches a human corpse, they must use the ritual of the para aduma to become pure once again. This process takes seven days, and they must be sprinkled with the ashes of the para aduma on the third and seventh day, and dip in the mikvah, and then they become pure. Following the para aduma, we learn about the death of Miriam Hanavia, Miriam the prophetess, Moshe Rabbeinu's sister, and the wife of one of the spies who spoke virtuously about the land of Israel, Kalev ben Yifuna. The rock that would miraculously provide water to the Jewish nation in her merit dried up with her passing, and she passed away and was buried in the city of Kadesh. However, a question comes to mind. As the Torah announces Miriam Hanaviyah's passing, it seemingly adds extra words. The Pasuk writes, And the whole congregation of the Jewish people came to the desert of Tzin. But why does the Torah include the words Kala Eida, the whole congregation, if it already says B'nai Yisrael, the Jewish people? What is the Torah implying with these extra words? The Rabbeinu Bachayr of Bachir bin Asher, a famous 14th century Spanish commentary, writes that our Parsha jumps many years. We are now discussing events that occurred and happened at the end of the 38th year of a 40-year exile to wandering in the desert. Just two weeks ago, we learned about the stories of the spies, and the consequence of it was a banishment to 40 years of wandering in the desert. The Rabbeinu Bachai explains that our parsha picks up at the end of the 38th year, which has specific implications, because the generation that left Egypt would never enter the land of Israel. This unfortunately required thousands and thousands of people to die and pass away and a new generation to take its place. Hence, the Torah now tells us, Kol Ha'ida, the whole congregation, to teach us and tell us that the punishment ended and these specific individuals would be entering the land of Israel. The Rabbeinu Bachai continues that not only would this generation enter Israel, but they themselves were whole. With time and their faith in God, they weren't broken by the death of the previous generation. In fact, they were emotionally whole and mentally stable and ready to settle in the Promised Land. However, the Orachim HaKadosh, Rav Chaim Ibn Attar, a Moroccan commentary and Kabbalist, gives us a deeper and more profound explanation. He writes that the Torah emphasizes Kol Ha'ida, the whole congregation, to teach us that there was unity. Although they were not perfect, there was a feeling of harmony and solidarity. The Aracha Makadish explains that this unity may have been in honor of Miriam's passing and a true understanding and a true recognition of their situation. The Jewish people collectively knew that those alive today would enter the land of Israel. Hence, an immense spirit of solidarity and understanding grew larger each day. And despite being different in so many ways, they were the ones who would enter the land of Israel. They realized that they are the generation who would finally fulfill God's promise to Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. They are the people who have the opportunity to achieve God's deepest desire and build Him a home in Jerusalem. They are the ones who will merit to settle in the holiest of lands to bring God into the world. The Yorachai Makadesh clarifies that this unity was so uncommon that it demonstrated that they were ready to fulfill and able to fulfill their destiny. They had grown so tremendously over the past 38 years that now they understood what it means to be a nation to see the uniqueness of each soul and recognize its value to our Father in Heaven, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In our daily life, we must open up our eyes to the many forces trying to divide and break up our nation. They try to tell us to look at our externalities and forget what truly connects us. They emphasize our differences and ignore what truly ties us together. But Hashem requires from us the same peace, compassion, and understanding as He did from the Jewish nation in the desert. 
He needed them to realize that they are truly one and responsible for each other and the exact requirement is necessary now for us to experience our ultimate redemption. There's a powerful question by Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs. Jewish unity exists as an idea. Why then should it not exist as a fact? Have a great weekend and a beautiful Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Thank you.